old Klingon proverb. <laughs> nice little Star Trek reference to start us off. <laughs> Straight into the action. Like a, maybe a wedding dress or something? She has a veil on. Okay, that's Bill. I guess we know who we're going to be killing. You know, aware enough, even now, to know that there's nothing sadistic in my head. I feel like there's a lot of clues here, too. The ring, the bracelet, maybe recurring elements. This is me and my most masochistic. Bill? It's your baby. Whoa. Like, I knew it was coming, but it, like, made me jump. That's wild. Fantastic job by Uma Thurman there. Like, amazing acting. But How's it going, everyone? Welcome or welcome back to Real Night. My name is Jabril. Today, we are diving into Kill Bill for the first time. I know that there's some track suits, some sword play, and some toes. So, <laughs> I think we're in for a wild ride. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss another one. All right, enough talk. Let's roll it. Five and he was six, we rode on horses. Wow. <laughs> he wore black and I wore white. He would always win the fight. Bang, bang. He <laughs> shot me down. Bang, bang. I hit Song's kind of re rehashing what we just saw. You know, black and white. Shot me down. Came and changed the time. When I grew up, I called him my... This is an interesting title sequence. Very simple and, I don't know, I can make that in like two seconds. <laughs> Almost default font too. Just for me, the church bells rang. Okay, so yeah, maybe a wedding, church bells rang. So she, I mean, she said it was his kid. She, I guess maybe she was pregnant at the time. I guess that was the start or maybe that was foreshadowing there. If it was the start, she clearly survived. Bells. That might be something. It was. She meant to mention the bells ringing in the song. Yeah. Yeah, she was pregnant. <laughs> I think I've heard that song before too. Hey. Off rip, this choreography is really <laughs> unique. Very cartoonish. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so I'm assuming we're we're just gonna be like on a revenge spree this <laughs> this movie. Kind of figuring out what happened as we go along. Remind me of a uh, Django. <laughs> Little sound effects. Oh man, does she have a kid? Kid coming home, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful way to frame that too. Yeah, it might be a weak spot for her. She was pregnant whenever all that stuff went down. Mommy, can I put to you on the TV room? Oh. That good for nothing dog of yours? Got his little ass in the living room and acted a damn fool. Hi, honey. I'm Mr. Sneeds. What's your name? What? They bleep that. Her name is Nikki. How old are you, Nikki? I'm four. I had a little girl once. Mm. She'd be about four now. Me and mommy's friend got some grown up talk to talk about. So you can go in your room now, and I want you to leave us alone till yeah. I tell you to come out. Crazy way to highlight it, too. Just the way that, like, adults will hide the truth, the reality from their kids, going to the extent of, like, lying. I get, like, you know, why it happens, but interesting way to bring that into the narrative a little bit. I'm not saying that it's to the extent that, you know, some parents are murderers, but just to the extent that, as a kid, Nakia. you got to realize in that room. you probably don't know your parents as good as you think you do. Her name was Vernita Green. Her code name 
was Copperhead. Mine, Black Mamba. Do you have a towel? Hmm. So they worked together. Look, bitch. I need to know if you're gonna start any more shit around my baby girl. I'm not gonna murder you in front of your child. Better than she got. It's mercy, compassion, and forgiveness I lack. Not rationality. I don't think she lacks, uh, those qualities. <laughs> she just let her live because of her daughter. Just because I have no wish to murder you before the eyes of your daughter does not mean that parading her around in front of me is going to inspire sympathy. You and I have unfinished business. And not a goddamn fucking thing you've done in the subsequent four years is going to change that. Yeah, I gotta say, too, the, uh, the dialogue is very um, stylized as well. Like a comic, really. <laughs> that might be sort of what they're going for here. Or what Quentin was going for. We meet there around 2.30 in the morning, dressed all in black. Billo said you were one of the best ladies he ever saw with an edge weapon. Very funny! Yeah, should have been on her toes. I mean, I brought it on herself. <laughs> Not that she probably wouldn't have had something extra up her sleeve if they had actually met up and fought like that, but... Gonna get her daughter out of the house or just leave her? Mm. Dang. Your mother had it coming. I don't think that's making anything any better, but <laughs> it's an interesting parallel, too. They had the shattered glass before covering the ground. Now they have the cereal covering the ground. Sort of the adult versus the child, maybe. I'm probably just reading too far into that, though. If you still feel raw about it. For her revenge. Nice ride. <laughs> it's like My first car had flames on it. <laughs> Not quite as uh, ketchup and mustard as that one, but. Pussy <laughs> wagon. <laughs> Was that the person bef uh, she killed before? <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm sure you get a lot driving that thing around. Okay, now we're getting a flashback. El Paso. <laughs> Yeah, it looks exactly like El Paso. I spent some time down there. With a lot on my mind, I'm a <laughs> you gotta have your variety. One for every hour of the day. Give me the gore details. Sound number one. It's a goddamn massacre, Pop. Oh, a small town. Family sheriff's department. <laughs> Bride. Groom. Reverend. I wonder who the groom was. Where's Willem Dafoe when you need him? Uh, there was a firefight! Who's Brad? Don't know. The name on the marriage certificate is Arlene Machiavelli. That's a fake. Yeah, Machiavelli, yeah. Machiavellianism, it's like a manipulation characteristic. Um, it's sort of like a, a lack of empathy, uh, you know, motivation by self-interest. Uh, I think like sort of what she was saying that she is, you know, no mercy uh, when she was in the kitchen. So it's kind of cool. She's a blood spattered angel. Dang, man. It's kind of weird to be saying about a dead body. <laughs> Cocksucker ain't dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've heard this before, too. This is the beginning to a popular song. I'm sure they sampled it from here. Well, we got a ring. I don't know if those are standard issue stockings. <laughs> Finish the job, I guess. And I'm loving this like sort of dual shot. It's very cool. It is sort of adding to that sort of comic book aspect. 
driver is. Okay. Was that one of the names on the list or the next one? Interesting, and there's a um, an oni face on there. Hell, you're going to just like a sort of like a demon in Japanese culture. You all beat the hell out of that woman, but you didn't kill her. And I put a bullet in her head, but her heart just kept on beating. Yeah, where did that bullet go though? It didn't look like her face was messed up at all. But one thing we won't do is sneak into her room in the night like a filthy rat and kill her. That thing would lower us. A little bit of an honor game here. Thought that was pretty fucking funny, didn't you? Yeah, I'm sure she can hear still. Shithead. Okay, so she's just coming out of the coma, huh? Wild that she still has all those, you know, skills. Ugh. I hate mosquitoes. It's a crazy shot, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, speaking of excellent shots. Okay, so the side of the head. Yeah, I lost the baby. Yeah, you can really feel the loss here. You can really feel it. The way that the shot is like lingering. Tell me. Price is seventy five dollars a fuck, my friend. Wow. You getting a freak on or what? Why did? I... Oh, yeah, boy. As soon as they came in, I just had this inkling, man. Wow. Please tell me she kills these guys. <laughs> Our plumbing down there don't work no more, so feel free to come her all you want. Keep the noise down. Try not to make a mess. I'll be back in twenty. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> this guy's laugh laughs like a creep. <laughs> Well deserved. Well deserved. Probably deserved more than that, honestly. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> right in the Achilles. Where's Bill? My name is Bucks, and I'm here to fuck. <laughs> wow. What a line. <laughs> Beautiful. All this without legs, too. <laughs> yep. Pussy wagon. I was saying that sarcastically earlier, but clearly, this guy has nothing. Yep, there's the toes. <laughs> Tarantino is known for that. After four years, I'm sure there's a lot of atrophy going on. Just straight up right in the camera. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, like I get, you know, narratively why they, why it would be shown, but like, dang, <laughs> just knowing the background, it just makes it funny. Wiggle your big toe. As I lay in the back of Buck's truck, trying to will my limbs out of entropy, I could see the faces of the cunts who did this to me. Okay. And the dicks responsible. Is that Bill right there? The first name on my death list, Oren Ishii, was the easiest to find. Cottonmouth. Taking me back to uh, Luke Cage. The half Japanese, half Chinese American army brat witnessed the death of her parents at the hands of Japan's most ruthless Yakuza boss. It's so stylistic. I love it. And, you know, I think this is just the confirmation, without a doubt, that this is... <laughs> Maybe drawing anime, not necessarily comic book. Oh, man. 
I did not think we were going to be getting some animation in this. <laughs> Looks fantastic, though. It does look like it could potentially have been a little bit rotoscoped, though. Which wouldn't surprise me. I mean, they use rotoscoping quite a bit. Oh. So, like, gruesome and... A little bit of body horror. I was definitely not expecting this from this movie at all. She swore revenge. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Boss Matsumoto was a pedophile. <laughs> By 20, she was one of the top female assassins in the world. This is crazy. Like a mini cartoon or a mini anime within this live action show. Props to Tarantino. As most of his movies are, this is a masterpiece. <laughs> She made one big mistake. Didn't finish the job. First things first. Wiggle your big toe. <laughs> that was amazing. There you go. Oh, the man from Okinawa. This must be the man. Welcome. What brings you to Okinawa? Hattori Hanzo. Is that him? Hattori Hanzo ni ittai nan no yo desu ka? Nihon to ka itsu yo de kiritai nezumi ga iru kara. He's like an arms dealer, but for katanas. There's something like special about these blades, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sequence is so dreamy. <laughs> Again, with the sound effects, resonance to it. You like a samurai sword. I like this. Oh, are you about to get like, some training here? Or is he just seeing if she can use it, you know? I said give me. <laughs> Why should I help you? Because my vermin is a former student of yours. Oh, Cottonmouth? Or maybe he taught Bill? Bill. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Wonder if that's for a reason. Kind of looks like an accent or some kind of specific lettering. Okay, spent a month practicing with the katana. So I wonder why she didn't have it when she went to confront Copperhead. Weapon in hand, ready to confront Cottonmouth. It was one year after the massacre in El Paso, Texas, when the final sword was sheathed. It was Oren Ishii and her powerful posse that proved the victor. The pretty lady to Oren's. <laughs> The half French, half Japanese Sophie Fatale. Another former protege of Bill's. Yeah, so many of the like sound effects and songs in this are just such an integral part of pop culture, and I didn't had no idea that it was from this. Gogo -Go may be young, but what she lacks in age, she makes up for in madness. <laughs> Wrong answer! 
She's kind of giving me uh, May vibes from Avatar The Last Airbender. Don't really know that character too well yet, just because I'm not that far into the show, but... See what I mean? <laughs> Same energy. How could a half-breed become the boss of all bosses in Tokyo, Japan? The subject came up before the council only once. Angry Japanese just sounds so much more, like, heated. <laughs> With a quickness, wow. Tiptoes on the table, just wow. They definitely maintain that same vibe too um, from the animated sequence, you know, with the blood. <laughs> I can't get over that tiptoe run, that's hilarious. As your leader, I encourage you from time to time, and always in a respectful manner, to question my logic. It's interesting. She dropped the Japanese, you know, once the jig was up. I collect your fucking head. One ticket to Tokyo, please. There we go. Oh, man. For some reason, I just thought about Saints Row 2. If any of you guys have played that game, let me know. But you fight a gang in that in that game, that's kind of like the Yakuza. They go around on bikes like that with their katanas out some of the time. Oh, she was there too. <laughs> oh man, this is, you know, this is around the time like Matrix and stuff came out. The style was so popular. I feel like Tarantino's kind of making a parody out of it in this, but like a lot of the time it was done just in complete seriousness. <laughs> She has like a sixth sense or something. Interesting, I think that starts with like a, it's like a Shinto or something like that, or kind of like a dagger, but you know, Japanese version. <laughs> I'm sure somebody has done like a, a toe counter <laughs> or like a feet counter for this movie. So many shots. <laughs> this song too, I don't know if it's from this, Another recognizable piece here. And this has been, I think, like a run on shot. I'm sure there's many cuts, no, hidden cuts, but it's made to look like it's one shot. It may have been, though. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. I mean, kind of, I can see it a little bit, you know. Yellow kimono, but. <laughs> yeah, and they, like, the belt that he has on kind of. Mimics the uh, Charlie Brown shirt. They're still kind of like hiding her name. I wonder why that is. Uh, again with the exaggerated blood. I wonder if she is, you know, actually like Chinese or Japanese American. She doesn't necessarily look like for Japanese. Hey, at least they let Charlie Brown go. <laughs> he said he didn't want to die. Yeah, I guess that's that special steel. Hi. Is that a mace? You're wrong. Bingo. So a black mamba. Variant. <laughs> Cause those look like another form of weaponry on the other side. Or just maybe counterweights. 
Interesting. It's like they're following her with a dolly while they're doing this. Ooh. <laughs> Straight to the chest and she just took that thing. Wow. Yeah, I think bludgeoning weapons are a lot more intimidating to me than, you know, piercing weapons. Just because of the nature of them. Especially something like that where it's just like you're swinging. Your head might be the other way, but it's like, boom, it just catches you in the back of the head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's convenient. Oh my god, this is all good. Oh, red on white. Kind of like the wedding dress. Is Cottonmouth still here? been chilling. <laughs> Why is that lady still here? <laughs> you didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. What? <laughs> I did not expect a tricks commercial in the middle of this. <laughs> Don't tell me she's going to take all these people on, although I wouldn't put it past this movie. <laughs> Things have taken a sensual turn. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just remembered I saw like a Family Guy parody of this. Peter, you can tell I'm different because my weapon is different. Oh, well then maybe I won't be able to chop your head off. <laughs> and I think there was just like fountains of like blood and stuff. And I love the shift to black and white here. <laughs> of course we had to have a Wilhelm. But yeah, also the switch to black and white as sort of remembrance that, you know, this is her revenge mission for that, that wedding sequence. Yeah. Oh, I loved that shot. They're sort of following her in that circle overhead. That's awesome. Oh, man. Sick. I am loving all these atmosphere changes. Going from black and white back to color, now into silhouettes. Beautifully done. I mean, props to dude for standing there, although he's probably just glued in place out of fear. That was gravity defying right there. And this is sort of calling back to a lot of uh, Japanese films, like live action films as well. Like some of their action was kind of like this. They would be like flying back and forth, like doing sword fights and stuff. I can't think of an exact example, but I know I've seen it before. Just to think, like five to ten minutes ago, this place was <laughs> jumping, people dancing, having a good time. I don't think you're gonna get through customs with that. Except you, Soapy! Oh, dang, I thought she'd be dead. <laughs> All that blood she lost, how she was flailing on the ground like that. I wonder what the significance of this is. Yeah, we're not getting any music either. Your instrument is quite impressive. That's what she said. <laughs> this is 
Hattori hands are steel. Who sort scare? So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm seeing why they were highlighting the sword when when uh, Bill was on the phone with um, Eye Patch Lady Ellie, I think her name is Ellie Eye Patch. <laughs> she has no guard on there. I think they build tension in this movie very very well. And it's quite interesting too, they're kind of using sort of like a western kind of theme here. Yeah. Kind of like a classic western showdown. Oof. Yeah, I don't know if that month of training is going to do her very well here either. <laughs> you may not be able to fight like a samurai. You can die like one. But you can at least die like a salmon. <laughs> Classic line. Kakata kina. Omoe kirine. And I wonder if that kind of like fountain is kind of like symbolizing her blood too. Yeah. Warukata. Wakata. Interesting. Sort of a, an honor aspect. Ikuyo. Whew. Was that her head? Or just her hair? Looked like her scalp. I love how they did that too. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm going to have to look up the lyrics to this song. It might be sort of like a callback to the start when they were singing a song that kind of talks about the situation, just in Japanese. I wonder what she's doing with her. <laughs> to the hospital. She just living to tell the tale. Sophie. To get the to get the story to Bill. Okay. My Sophie. I'm so sorry. You gotta leave one to tell the story. I've kept you alive for two reasons. First reason is information. And every time you don't give me answers. I'm going to cut something off. If you had to guess what they've been doing, where she left you alive, and where I can find them. What would I like the dual dialogue, kind of like interrogating her here. And the second reason is so you can tell him. In I don't know, when she rolled down the hill, it looked like she still had like legs and arms, but. And I want them all to know they'll all soon be as dead as a rat. Nice ultimatum there. <laughs> the CG plane. 2003. What a year. Death list. Five. I think I've heard this quote. It's like a forest or... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if that's from this or if that's from something else. Desires her revenge. We deserve to die. Wonder who that is. She must suffer to her last breath. Uh, maybe that's Bud. <laughs> so we got Vernita. You know, Ellie. Ellie Eye Patch is next. <laughs> How did you find me? I'm the man. <laughs> I wonder why blue and green there. Her eyes and her earrings. Is she aware her daughter is still alive? 
<laughs> wow, yeah, what a cliffhanger to leave us on. <laughs> wow, okay, so her daughter didn't die. After all of that, after all that beating and the gunshots? As expected, this was a very well-written movie. The dialogue was immersive, yet still kept that very campy energy. The shots and compositions were stunning, and of course the music and sound design were just the icing on the cake. I wish more stories in cinema today were told in this way, especially the female-led ones. There are so many potential opportunities that are missed in modern Hollywood to create compelling stories starring women, mostly due to the fact that they bring in so much political idealism into the mix and focus on that rather than giving the characters deep and nuanced flaws and hardships to overcome with a big payoff in the end like we got here. By all accounts, the bride is extremely overpowered. <laughs> However, unlike for example She-Hulk, we get to see her struggle and we get a deep look from the start into her motivations. A prime example of this would probably be the truck scene in which she's trying to wiggle her toe and it takes remembering the person that she's hunting leading us to that amazing animated sequence, plus 13 hours to get to a place where she can actually drive. Then we see the prep getting the Hanzo steel so she can have an edge over her opponents. All of this driven by what was done to her but also more specifically her unborn child which also highlights a uniquely feminine aspect to the story and that loss was definitely highlighted beautifully by Uma Thurman here Now we learned that her daughter is alive at the end of this one, so I assume that's going to be a big reveal for her in volume two. And I don't know how that is going to change her stance, if at all, seeing as there were another eight that she can avenge as well, including the groom, who I am a bit curious to know the identity of, but it might not even matter, seeing as there was obviously something going on with Bill, maybe during that relationship, I'm not sure. I'm sure that the vendetta is going to continue, maybe, we're gonna cross a couple more names off the list or that might change. We have Bud and we have uh, Ellie next and then of course culminating with Bill but I'm also curious to know who that second katana is if that's even important at all. That might be Hanzo. She was also talking to another person at the end and there is a green and a blue highlighted within the image so not really too sure the meaning of that as of now but I'm sure we'll find out what that might mean going forward. Thank you all for watching. If you all enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and leave a comment down below. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell just so you never miss another one, and I will see you all on the next one.